Yay, 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 yay. Yay, yay. That's the rapper that fucking. <laughs> Beyonce and Justin Bieber, bitch. The beehive and the bee. I can slay, bitch. It's just a natural blooper reel every single <laughs> oh, time. Is it recording or recording? Yeah. Ugh. Welcome back to Push It Tea Time. I'm special. I'm Francesca. And today, since it is Valentine's Day, we're gonna talk about rappers that we love. And for a bonus, we're gonna talk about the rappers that we would take to Red Lobster. Yes. Hi, Beyonce. How you doing? Thank you for that. It's, it's Good, it's so good. Well, it's really, really good. It's amazing. So I'll start off. First rapper that I love is Slick Rick. Slick Rick, incredible. Storytelling, like that was really the first rapper that I heard tell stories and like amazing stories that you can visualize. And even if you've never been in those situations, you can see these things because they're so animated. But on top of that, like people give me grief because his, you know, treat her like a prostitute and stuff like that. But at the same time, like, I feel like some of that stuff is necessary. Yes, I'm a girl. Yes, I believe girl power, all this shit is great. But at the same time, like, there's some women out there who don't value themselves and who are gonna take you for granted and who are gonna do bad things. So you have to treat bad people bad. That's just how it goes. And I think we have this conversation a lot, like just coming from the West Side and hearing all, you know, our versions of gangster rap and all that stuff, like. I think women who are brought up on the West Coast, listening to West Coast music, kind of have a different identification when it comes to bitch and hoe and, you know, stuff Absolutely. like that being thrown out freely. And so I feel like with Slick Rick, I kind of identified it the same way to where it's like, I know I'm not a prostitute. I know that nobody that I come in contact with is gonna treat me like a prostitute, but there are certain women who carry themselves in that way and certain you know, women that men need to be aware of and kind of treat them that way. So that's how I feel about it. That's how I'm gonna defend it. And I love you, Slick Rick. On that note, <laughs> um, I guess along that same line, I'm gonna go with Tupac. Um, Tupac, I feel like I grew up on Tupac in a way that I didn't grow up on other rappers because, you know, um, for the most part, single mom, my brother and I had different dads. A lot of what Tupac was saying was really reaching my brother at the time. And so it sort of trickled down to me. So I really feel like, I felt like when I was coming up, Tupac's music was like a part of my family almost. Oh, um, and you know, I mean, there are of course the different layers of Tupac, right? Dear Mama and like California Love are two totally different things. But I think that's, that's one of the best things about right. Pac is he's one of those rappers that could do it all. Right. And to where it doesn't sound forced or corny or, you know what I mean? Like Absolutely. it's like there was just two sides of him, which was, it was just perfect for the timing. And even today, like it's, sorry. It's no, 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 no. I mean, absolutely. And that's why, um, kind of like what you were speaking to, like the way that people get about how rappers talk about women and blah, 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 blah. It's like I heard both sides from the same person, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that really grounded me in that, like I don't I don't take it any type of way when I hear rappers refer to women in ways that, let's say if someone said that to my face, we would have an issue. Um, because I know there's two sides to that coin. And I know that I'll be the first person to call a man a hoe. Yep. So, I, or a bitch I, or I, anything else. I call men bitches more than I call women bitches. <laughs> okay. Easy, all day. Okay, so it's like, you know, I mean, I think when you, when you grew up with that music, when you grew up with that terminology, when you grew up with that culture, it's easy for you to go, yeah, I get, I get why someone could have a problem with this, but mm -hmm. I know where someone's coming from when they say it. I know that when I call special my bitch or whatever, I know that's a totally different thing when I say somebody, you're a bitch. Exactly. Like, two totally different things. So I kind of got that, honestly, from Pac coming up. Just these little sort of lessons that made me feel like, you know, Pac's music was like definitely a piece of my childhood. Keeping it on the West Coast. Next one we gotta go to is E40. A girl. A girl. A girl. Forty water. water. The man Forty himself. Yes. <laughs> we talk about it all the time in our spare time. The man. Every single song. If it's a function record. If it's you know just any record, he is constantly dropping knowledge. And it's the type of knowledge that you really need in your life that you might not have gotten from your parents or just things that just make so much sense. Like even from day one, like this is nothing new with E-40 and he carries it all the way into 2016. Every single song has knowledge that you need, like just one bar or it might be a whole <laughs> verse. Like he is incredible. Like the knowledge is incredible. And I mean, who else can really say they've been relevant this long? Yeah. 
and just still making amazing music, still true to himself, true to California, you know, true to the Bay Area, true to Vallejo, like hasn't switched up at all, but still maintains this great level of great music. Like it's and, crazy. And can work with anybody. Too. Yes, like, anybody. Anybody. There's nobody that doesn't sound good working with E40, but I think really like, where E40 deserves the most accolades is like, I just don't know anybody who has been as consistent, yep. um, even just with popularity yep. for the last what, 20 plus years. Crazy. I mean, E40 had hits on the radio then, he has hits on the radio now. It's yep. not a lot of people you can say that about for that span of time. Now granted, we were in the base, so we were hearing him probably earlier than a lot of people, yep. but to me, his reach is still the same. Yep. So you gotta shout out on girl. Definitely, definitely. Who's next on your list? You know, I'm gonna take it in a totally different direction. Um, <clears throat> it's probably not an answer a lot of people expect from me, but I'm gonna take some time to show love to Earl Sweatshirt, another Earl. Yes. Earl um, the Earl the Earl. Earl, <laughs> to Earl. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go to Earl because um, I think Earl did something for me when I first started really listening to his music that I didn't get from a lot of other rappers. And even though I know there are other rappers that do it, I don't necessarily like it as much, which is that he talked about a lot of mental health stuff Definitely. that I really appreciate. I mean, in my you know normal nine to five, I'm a therapist. And so hearing someone talk about, in, from an honest place, mm -hmm. um, just mental health issues and how they're feeling and how that affects their career and what people, how people around them perceive their mental health stuff. like. I've always appreciated that, um, both as someone who works in mental health and as someone who, you know, deals with life issues on a daily exactly. basis. So I definitely want to take some time to shout out Earl. I think you're dope. I maybe don't give you the credit that I give a lot of other rappers, but it's not because I'm not listening or because I don't like you. It's just not necessarily in my normal rap wheelhouse. Makes sense. And any Earl and Frank Ocean track together, God damn it. Frank Ocean. Damn it. Biggest fan over here. God, Frank Ocean. And you know what? On that note, I just like to say on the record, it's okay that he hasn't released a second project. Channel Orange is so good that I'm still listening to it to this day. So all of the haters out there talking about <laughs> All the haters out there sound like a crazy person. But seriously, like, there's a lot of backlash about the fact that he hasn't released a second project. And as much as I would love a second project, at the same time, I love Channel Orange that much that it doesn't really matter. It's it's okay. I'm still bumping it. It's still good. And we all know that forced projects don't turn out good anyway. So leave the man alone. Anyways, I digress. Back to back to the rappers we love. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna steal another one of yours because that's what we're here for. We we agree Theft. a lot. On on the last couple episodes, you know, we've disagreed, but on this episode, we're gonna agree on a lot of stuff because this is just real life. So, MF Doom, gotta go with MF Doom. My dude. Man, just just man. I didn't realize how much I loved MF Doom until. I want to say about four years ago. So I was a little late, but as we've heard in the other episodes, I'm late to a lot of shit, but I'm, I'm here <laughs> You're now. You're here now though. Here now. <laughs> so uh, MF Doom, just incredible. Like one of those rappers that you really will listen to it, run that shit back. What did he say? What? I got more soul than a sock with a hole? What? Like stop it. And that's just like a, like a low level line. Perfect. You know what I mean? Like that's just the one that first comes in my head. Man, and the way he uses music and flips it and just, huh. So Doom was mine. Yep. So let me just say that I've always said that um, MF Doom to me is like Elton John, the Elton John of rap. Mm -hmm. And if you don't listen to Elton John, this won't make sense. But if you do listen to Elton John, you'll get that Elton John says some things that sound truly bizarre to most people. Mm -hmm. But if you really understand him and understand his music, it comes together in a beautiful way. And that's how I feel about Doom. I feel like, if you can get what he's trying to do, it's amazing. But if you don't get it, you're, you're just not gonna fuck with him. Um, so shout out to people who get it. Exactly. Uh, which is not like Running one back. of those, yeah, this is not like, oh, you have to be smart to listen to J. Cole kind of comments. That's not what I mean. Mm. I mean, do you have the patience to sort of pay attention um, with MF Doom? But he's just one of the one of the greatest. But just to um, go off what you were saying with like the whole comic book aspect, it brings me to Ghostface, um, who is, <laughs> I mean, Jeez. he's Ghostface. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? I don't even know what to say. Like, I mean, just on so many levels, like the versatility, the subject matter, right. the storytelling. Like, you, 
the nicknames, that's always Hello. Fun. You know, <laughs> you know, like there there's and even like when I say versatility, like that like Ghostface makes love songs, but then he'll also turn around and tell you how a bitch fucked him over. Right. But then talk about how he was out in the streets and you know what I mean? Like his versatility is incredible, but it always fits him because it's true to him. So he's always true to himself in a way that goes through all these different stories and all these different topics and is completely versatile and yeah. And he does something that I call, like I call it conversational rap, mm -hmm. where it sounds oftentimes more like he's talking than mm -hmm. like he's rapping, yeah. but I always love it because it's always funny as fuck. Like I don't <laughs> get the impression that he's trying to be funny. It's just hilarious. Like. <laughs> he does this one song, he's like, you bitch ass nigga, are those capris? Go get your feet done. And I'm just like, Thank are you, you gonna say it. that to another man? Like, you gonna disrespect another man like that? Like, oh, Ghost, yes. you just, you gotta love, if you don't, I don't trust anybody who don't love Ghost. That's real, that's, that's real. Bottom real. line. Very real. Can I get into my who I wanna take to Red Lobster now? Okay. I'm ready for it. She's ready. I'm Sirs, ready. <laughs> she wants to take you to Red Lobster. If you're watching this and you're interested in some <laughs> Red Lobster, <laughs> I'm Tyler the Creator. That that's it. I, I've had this strange relationship. It's not an obsession. Obsession is a strong that's word. Me. Um, but I mean, the history of it is when I first heard Tyler, I was like, no, this is too aggressive. It's it's like the whole raping and all the crazy shit and eating the cockroaches. I'm like, nah. But I always knew deep down that like he loved NERD and I love NERD. And there's not many people in the world that love NERD like we love NERD. Like some people still to this day don't know who they are and that's cool. You stay there, we don't need you here. It's all good. But for the people who really love it, it's, it's such a big deal. And even people who really loved like the Neptunes and were really down with that movement, you know, there's, it's a certain type of person. So I always had that in the back of my mind. Like, I don't really like what he's doing here when he first started out, but I knew he had that. So once he got into a little bit more of the softer stuff and once he did work with Pharrell and he was kind of like branching off into himself, I fell in love. Like, and it's not- Literally. But it's not even like a, oh my God, I want to have sex with you and have your babies. I'm a groupie, we'll do two of like, the creative aspect of him is incredible. Like Cherry Bomb is amazing. And that's because it sounds like a missing NERD album that we never got. And like his creativity is incredible. Like now I've come to like understand it and understand what he's doing. But of course now like I like the more, I guess you could say, I, won't, I wouldn't even say softer side, but I like where he is right now and where he's going with things and how it's not as dark and disturbing i like this now like i like where he is and like working with charlie wilson like come on like one more one more do you want i love charlie wilson <laughs> rappers i love charlie wilson <laughs> but um yeah i just really admire his artistry i i admire him for being you know basically straight edge and just the things that he gets excited about are exciting like he you know has a magazine he has an app he directs videos he does all this stuff and he's truly passionate about it. He doesn't really care about anything else. And I just think it's dope. I'm sad. I'm not obsessed. I'm sorry, that <clears throat> was a cough. I don't even know. We're gonna talk about obsessed when we have a TV show. <laughs> okay. We have a YouTube show named Excuse after me, rapper. It's my turn. And your Twitter handle is named after it's rapper. It's my turn. But I'm obsessed. Okay. I have a prize to give away. Oh. <laughs> Shout out to Instagram, Ma. I see you, baby. I follow you on Instagram. You killing him. I have a prize to give away to the rapper that I want to take to Red Lobster. Here we go. Here I don't really go. want to take him to Red Lobster though. Not like that. I yeah. just, you could be my Valentine. Yes. This is getting weird. Mine is going to be, of course, Pusha T. Okay. The reason we're all here. I really thought you were going to say future and I was going to get so upset. <laughs> Bitch, what? <laughs> I thought you were going to get What? I, it's weird. I try to explain to people why I love Push so much because, I mean, this motherfucker's been rapping about the same thing <laughs> for a long time. Yes. But I think that's why I love him because he's been rapping about the same thing for so long and he still finds ways to make it fresh, to make it dope. For the record kids, rapping about moving coke is way better than rapping about doing, doing coke. coke. Yes. Don't wanna hear that shit, ever. You're not tight. You sound stupid. You talking to The weekend? I'm talking to a lot of people okay, actually. Just, There's just a long curious. list that we can't go through, but if you heard it, you know it. 
This is about love though. Yep, sorry. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think like the fact that A, he's just a phenomenal rapper, B, he somehow managed to literally rap about the same thing for all this time we're and still holds our interest. Still here for it. Right, like we're literally like, we want more of you. Yeah. And you've been talking about the same shit this entire time. Like that's a fucking feat. Yes. Like Drake has to find new strippers to talk about every album, but you talking about the same drug. <laughs> <laughs> all this time i'm just saying like i know i mean and hilarious. i love drake that's not shit i mean you know whatever but like i'm just saying you're sensational there we go thanks for watching guys make sure you hit the like button leave down in the comments who we forgot hey that works too you know who do you love you're sensational okay. for watching if if you're a man or a woman tell us who you love we're not into you know all that stuff just let us know who you love down in the comments and click subscribe so you get all our videos straight to you.